So today I want to talk about my bike. Yes, I know that's pretty cliche on YouTube, but what I specifically want to do is go through all the components, all the settings on it. There is some rationale behind it, and I reckon you guys might enjoy and get a little bit of insight into why I've done it. Let's start with the frame. This is the Devel A01 rim brake version. I'm actually running a 49, which measures a little bit over 51 and a half centimeters along the top tube. I am right between two sizes. I'm right between the 47 and the 49. Now I originally got the 47, I was quite happy with it. But on the white version, the white version of this bike, I've gone up a size. And I wanna tell you why I've done that. So the first is, it means I don't have to run any spaces. On the smaller bike, I tend to have about 10 mil of spaces under there. I don't have to do this on this bike. Two other reasons, this is super practical, all right? First is bottle cages. On smaller frames, you cannot get bottles on the in your bike. So on this bike, I can get two 750 mil bikes quite comfortably in the frame. I can't do that on a smaller frame. The other is tire clearance and more importantly, brakes. I'll talk a little bit about brakes as it goes along, but on the smaller frame, I would have much smaller. Well, essentially I could only just get a 25 mil to fit tubeless on this bike. I can do it quite comfortably on the larger bike. I do want to quickly mention this. Now I did the Wii Group Set vlog the other day. That is not a review. There is a lot of components on here that essentially guys, you can't buy, they're beta products, they're test products. I probably didn't make that clear enough in the Wii Group Set vlog. Things like recommended retail price, weight, all that kind of stuff. Well, all those things are changing because these are beta products. So this is very much not a sales pitch. This is just the experience that we are having with these products. Let's start at the front of the bike and with these levers, because there's two things with these Wii Group Set levers that I reckon you might find kind of interesting. The first is that the lever reach itself I've brought in. Now you can do that from a flathead screwdriver position and you actually move the lever in quite considerably. The other is that the levers themselves are longer than when we first started trying. They've actually added about two centimeters to the length of the lever, which as you can probably imagine, makes a big difference, especially when you're down in the drops. Having run mechanical group sets the last couple of years, I actually had my levers far further out because I found that you wanted the touch and the feel of the lever further out. But with an electronic group set, I found because it's a button press and there's no feel to it as such, you just want it close so you can just get the job done with the actual shift. The levers are attached to these Vision Metron 5D bars, 40 centimeters wide, 120 centimeters long. Now, a couple of fun facts with the Metron bars. As you guys might remember, I was running these bars back when we had the Bianchis, maybe four years ago, the Vision Metron bars. Now, fast forward these few years, and Aaron pointed this out to me, these bars actually weigh about 120 grams less than the Vision 5D ones that was running that time ago. You'll also notice I'm running proprietary bike computer mount that also has a GoPro attachment underneath for all that wonderful race footage that I'm intending to hopefully shoot. And also the GUEE GUI bar tape, which we love. Moving on to the brakes. Here I was saying to you guys that rim brakes are so easy and it's the easiest thing you can ever do. Fitting brakes on a small frame with an integrated setup is difficult. The backstory to this is I had the smaller frame, okay? I had the smaller frame, which of course means much less room in here for cables. And what I found with that, there was not a lot of room because there was not a lot of cable here. There's not a lot of room for turn here. So I could, at some points, only turn my sort of bars, like what was that, like 30 degrees type thing, which really isn't suitable. So moved to the bigger frame, tried to put the FSA uh, brakes on here, and they didn't fit. Tried some Dura Ace ones, they worked, but again, didn't have the play. Eventually, we found, yes, potentially the most expensive solution, which are these EE brakes. Now I know these things appear on most weight weenie builds because they are super, super light, but for me, they are the most practical solution to what was this problem of this cable really not being long enough and then it pulling 
it pulling on the brake cable and sending the brake out of alignment if I would make a turn. I really, really like these brakes. I think they are the best brakes out there. The pull on them, the modulation on them is fantastic. Yes, they are very expensive, but as far as I'm concerned, stopping is kind of important. Moving on to the drive chain, and I've got the K-Force Lite crankset on here running a 5339 chainring. More interestingly is the power situation. Now, as you guys may remember, I was testing a P-Box single-sided power meter on the left crank there recently. We're still doing that, but the way that works at the moment is we get firmware updates on it, we test them, we send them back to FSA. And the power meter is the Asioma pedals. Guys, I gotta say at this point, they're just the industry standard. Like, you come back to them and you just go, these things are bulletproof. This crank is about 550 grams, somewhere like that. You throw these pedals on, it's a lighter setup than running any spider-based power meter. Like, I had the Power to Max FSA one on here for a bit, and that was almost an 800 gram power meter. Now, you could run normal pedals on it, you're still running a much heavier setup than what's on here, which is dual-sided, like bulletproof power and a crank that's just super, super solid. Some of the guys have had to run a washer on the non-drive side of the bottom bracket because there was some play in the bottom bracket. Anyone who was riding near John O'Farley at Gippsland will have heard his bottom bracket, and that's because he didn't have that washer in there and there was some play in it. Put the washer in, all sorted. Traveling a little bit further back in the bike, we've got the rear part of the drive chain. Now, as you guys remember from the Wii Group Set vlog, the front derailleur and the rear derailleur are actually cabled, so there is a cable running between the two of them. Gearing wise, I actually have an 1132 set up on here, which is the max you could have on the FSA group set currently. I cheat a little bit actually, and I leave the 32 down at the farm, which is where I am at the moment, because it's really, really hilly. It is an FSA chain. It is also an FSA cassette. Two fun facts I want to share with you on this rear derailleur, okay? The first is that a great example of some of the updates and things that you've seen. If you actually go onto the FSA website, onto their manual, because that's what everyone does, right? Go onto the manual and have a look at how to charge this group set as a whole. It tells you that you have to remove two screws from here and then unplug before plugging it in. Those two screws don't exist anymore. So one of the updates that we've seen that's already come along to this is there's no screws there. That literally just pulls out and you pop in the charger cable. That's the first thing. The second is, yes, I could potentially trial ceramic speed oversized jockey wheels on this group set. It does work. So anyone who wants to send me some Shimano 11 speed oversized jockey wheels, we can give them a try, all right? While we're down here, we have to talk about this little combination here, the Metron 30 wheels, which are my go-to ride every day, bulletproof, love just the feel of these wheels and married up to, you. look, I'm not gonna go on and on about these tires again. We all know them at this point. If you can get a pair, you're doing very, very well. The High Road tubeless ready, tubeless setup on my bike, 25 mil tires. No, I don't run 28s. Look, here's the thing. As a 60, I weighed myself this morning, a 62.5 kilo bike rider, I don't tend to put much more than 60 PSI in these wheels anyway. So to put bigger, fatter tires on here is not really gonna be any advantage to me. Just coming up from the wheels, what is this? Well, this is our seat post Plant. So any wedge-based system with an aero bike always comes with the danger because, because it's not clamping, it's forcing. It's just the way a seat post works with an aero bike. So the way this works on this bike is we have the actual wedge underneath this torqued to about 10 Newton meters, which is pretty high, right? Which shouldn't really move. But then on top of that, we have this uh, seat collar, which is torqued to six Newton meters. And the saddle is a Stella Italia SLR Boost. I really have not had any problems with any saddle I've ever ridden. So I'm probably the worst saddle. It's why you haven't seen a saddle review on this channel, because I'm basically just gonna say, 
Yeah, it seems to work. These things do tend to just put you in a position and you are in that position permanently. I, I do like to move. I don't have any sort of issues and such. So I do like the concept of moving around the saddle as the day goes on, but I've got this saddle. It was expensive. There's no point in changing it for the sake of changing it. It's good. Bottle cages, uh, we have the Elite Vico Carbon up forward and the Elite Rocky at the back. I have the Rocky here because you can do the side entry bottle because I can't, the frame's not big enough for me to pull the bottle out and put it back in straight up and down as you would here. I originally had this one here and snapped this one. So go on the sort of side entry mountain bikey one here, normal road one up forward. And while I'm up here, can anyone tell me why? Why every bike in the world uses these stupid T-bolts for bike bottle cages and that's a bolt used nowhere else on a bike? What is it? Is there anything I would change about the setup on my bike? Potentially, potentially I wouldn't mind trying some 38 mil bars with a shorter stem, so maybe coming back 110 mil. That would probably be the only thing I would potentially change. But look guys, you can, you can kind of see from the way I've set the bike up with the slightly larger frame for the bottle cages and the brakes, the shallower wheel section, running the tubeless wheels like at a kind of low PSI. That, that's very much the riding that I like doing. I like going up and down hills. I don't like long days in the flat. And you can kind of see that that's sort of the way I've sort of set the bike up. So that is my bike. That's the choices that are made on my bike. I really hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you would like to see more of this content, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you super soon.